Hi there. We are back in the blue bus, the blue avian, the bus that was converted down in San Antonio, Texas for that wonderful couple from California. And I have pulled down these lights. I'm gonna do, you know, they make a hole saw. I have no idea what they cut that with. Somebody, I don't know, set their pet rat loose on it. And then here is the switch. But anyway, there's another one back there. I am going to bring my borescope out and shoot some video up in there. Little surprise to show you. So again, these should be crimp connectors. This is low voltage wiring. It's not really a hazard. Maybe it depends on whether it's fused appropriately or not, but wire nuts are not a good idea. And there's that switch. Well, it's not coming out, but it certainly wasn't up in there all the way. So I'll take a look in there tomorrow. But for right now, I'm back in the breaker panel, service panel. And I wanted to show you something. Remember in the earlier video, I was able to move this wire quite a bit. I did not loosen this. It was just my fingers. So anyway, this is the wire coming in. Now I did disconnect everything just to make sure that there is nothing plugged in. In fact, I'm gonna come back here and I wanna show you more <laughs> that I didn't see the other day. You remember this water heater was plugged in there with these wire nuts, but look what you see if you look more closely. <laughs> so that's the ground wire and that is the neutral wire. And there is the black. And I don't know if you can see there is copper in there. I don't know what they strip these with, but somebody's an idiot. Anyway, that's pretty dangerous right there. Not just the wire nuts. So I am disconnecting this wire. If you remember from before, oh, sorry. If you remember from before, that insulation back there is torn. And you can see copper on the black, which will be the line. And then there's copper exposed on the neutral. I'm guessing what they did is they tried to cut the MX, that uh, metal armored cable, the flex with a hacksaw or something, instead of using a proper cutting tool. I will, I've got one at home, so I am going to cut away right now and show you a quick cut on some MX cable and what it should look like. So we'll come back in a second. This is what they used in that bus. Totally appropriate to use it, but the way you cut it is with, uh, you can use a hacksaw. You don't cut this way, which is I think what they were doing. You cut this way across one of the spirals and then untwist it, or you use a flex splitter. I've had this thing for so long. I think there's another name for them, a rotozip or something like that. But anyway, this thing pivots. You put it in there, pull it back. It locks it in place. Give it a few turns. And now it's cut through that side. And then you can peel or pull that off and it doesn't even nick the plastic sheathing in here. And then Properly, you would cut off a little sharp bit there. Now, this MC cable comes with little red heads or red hats, uh, little red plastic cone bushing that goes in here. I don't have one to show you handy, but even though it's not by code required on the MC cable, I do like to use them, especially in a vehicle, as an added layer of protection just against any potential chafing, but the proper connector on the end should prevent any chafing in here anyway, and I haven't nicked the wire. That's the right way to do it. All right, back to me. Anyway, I have separated, this is the line coming in from the 30 amp receptacle outside, and I'm going to hook an insulation tester up to this, and to the neutral, and to the ground, and let's just see if there are problems with the insulation on this wire that we can't see. Let me show you 
So this is a, oh, I'll try to get the glare off. This is a Klein ET600 insulation tester, sometimes called a Megger. I used a similar version of this when I was in wind energy. And it really was amazing because it would help me locate wire faults, intermittent errors or issues with cable that was buried or in conduit. So I brought all my test stuff out and I'm going to hook this up over here and then we'll do a test. Let me tell you just briefly how this meter works. It's not just a, so that symbol, let me back up. If you know this, I apologize, but that little wavy symbol, the sine wave is for measuring AC voltage. That's for measuring DC voltage. This is for continuity, little tone beep that tells you if wires are touching. And that is an ohm meter for measuring resistance in a wire. Over on this side, though, this is where the magic happens. This meter actually will inject voltage into wires, so it could be potentially dangerous. It'll certainly zap you if you're touching, because it can put out a 500 or even a 1,000 volt charge. Uh, voltage, <laughs> charge, I almost said current. Uh, voltage into wires, and generally, so this is a 120 volt line, and you want to test it a you know two or three time multiple of that so i will put this on 250 volts first and then we'll try it at 500 volts and it can find leakage through insulation nicks like this so first we'll try this wire which goes hopefully directly from here down to the plug outside and then we'll try this wire and just see how it compares and then i can try the others and it'll show you how you can identify if there are issues in the insulation without ripping everything out so i'll take this lead and clip it to okay now i'm up here on the neutral bar and sorry take the other one Clip it to that wire. Turn the meter on. And push test. And down in the bottom right, it'll show you the voltage. And then it'll show you the resistance. Let's see what happens. Oh, let's put the backlight on. There. 260 volts. And so that is as high as the meter will read. And so that tells me that um, that is in mega ohms. And that's why sometimes this is called a megger, which is a brand. And then before you do anything, you want to make sure this drops back down to zero. So that tells me that the insulation on this wire is not compromised in a way that it's touching the neutral. We could also check neutral to ground. But let's move to... Let's turn the meter off. Let's move over to this one that we know has a compromise right there. Before we go, in order to do that, I just want to free this end up. I could, well, the easiest way is just take it out of that breaker there. We're going to have to pull these breakers out and replace them with proper 20 amp breakers anyway. All right, now I have the red lead connected to that black wire. Sorry about the lighting, it's later in the day. And this one has an obvious nick in it, and the other is connected to the neutral. So what I'm doing is checking for voltage leakage through the insulation between this black wire and the neutral up here. So we'll turn the meter on, put it on 250 volts, turn the backlight on, and then when we test, this should ramp up to 250 volts and then give us a resistance reading. If it's 4,000, that is the maximum limit, uh, 4,000 mega ohms uh, down here. That's the maximum limit of the meter, and that tells you everything's okay. Wow. It only climbed to 11 volts. It's trying to put 250 volts into that wire. And look at the resistance, 0 0.001 mega ohms. Uh, how many ohms is that? Somebody who can divide. All right. Anyway, that is low. So there is obviously continuity somewhere. Uh, there is leakage between this wire and the neutral. 
and that should not be there. I mean, that's really low. I'm surprised it only got up to 11 volts. And this wire back here, even though I can see the insulation, that wire is not touching the bushing here. So I'm surprised that's actually that low. Not sure where that goes to. So let's check the continuity between this and the ground. All right, same test, only this time, instead of having the black lead connected to the neutral, it's connected to the ground, 250 volts still. Wow, so somewhere there's a lot of leakage between this line and the ground. And this line, keep in mind, when that breaker's on, is going to carry 120 volts. Super dangerous. Just for giggles, well, maybe not the right phrase to use because this is dangerous. And of course, it's going to be a problem with rip. We're going to have to rip out wiring. I moved that lead from the neutral to the ground. Now, should there be any voltage connection between the line, the hot wire, and the ground? No. So we're only getting up to 10 volts, even though we're on the 250 volt setting and the resistance is super low. That's darn near dead short. So somewhere there's a break in insulation or some connection that is allowing voltage to leak from this hot wire to the ground wire. I've checked all four circuits in here and the only one that's any good is the wire between here and down there, which is all of six feet. So they got six feet right but the rest we're gonna to have to open up every box and look for abraded wiring and stuff in there. Basically, we're gonna to have to pull this panel out and redo it. I feel bad for them, but anyway, I wanna show you what you can test, not necessarily you, but you can have this test done if you're concerned about the integrity of the wiring in your bus, if you've got breakers that are tripping, uh, if you're getting zapped anywhere, uh, you want to do a mega test, a mega ohm test, uh, also known as an insulation test, and check the wiring. Anyway, be safe out there. I'll do another video when I bring the borescope up and poke it up into the ceiling and show you what's going on up there. Wait, I haven't left the bus yet. I grabbed another meter just because I wanted to see, okay, if you don't have a mega ohm meter, are there some preliminary checks you can do. And yeah, so this is just a standard multimeter and I have it set in the ohm or resistance mode. And in a bus, the panel should have a separate neutral and a separate ground. You don't ever want to tie the neutrals and the ground together in your bus. They should get tied together at one point and if you are connected to shore power, that will be in the pedestal. It's not a bad idea to have an, an ammeter, an ohmmeter, sorry, a multimeter for checking a pedestal when you get there. Uh, just make sure that the, the ground and the neutral are bonded together in that box, but they should not touch anywhere in your bus. They should be separate. So let me throw this probe in here and I just wanna try something. So this is a dead short between the ground and the neutral in this bus, which is not the way it should be. I also want to check here. So neutral to that, nothing neutral to that. The OL is at a limit or over limit. So that tells me that nothing is touching. Just like now, if I touch these together, then you see I have a very low resistance. So Nothing, which is what we want. That means that there's a short, a connection between the ground and the neutral in this bus, which is not appropriate, not safe. Look at that. So this black wire somewhere is connected. I didn't even have to use the mega ohm meter. There's basically 10 ohms of resistance, which is super low between this wire and the neutral up here. 
if I check this wire, my light went off. Let's check the red one. Again, very low resistance between, between that red wire and the neutral. That's a problem. OL, over limit or out of limit, that's good. That tells me that, you know, nothing's touching there. So that wire, we have a problem. That wire is okay. Well, not okay because the mega ohm meter identified a, a leak in the insulation. So that's the advantage of the mega ohm meter. I guess it shows you the difference. But this is a good preliminary test you can do. So definite problem there. Anyway, hope that helps. Talk to you later. Bye.